In this video, we're taking a look at how to construct, play, and use the melodic minor scale. Hello and welcome to Axe Toots, the show where we explore guitar playing and music theory to take our playing to the next level. I'm your host, Ray George. This video is kind of the final video of three covering the minor system of music. I've already covered the natural minor scale in season two, episode nine, and the harmonic minor in season one, episode 20. So now it's time to look at the melodic minor scale, or sometimes referred to as the jazz minor scale. As with any other scale, and if you've watched any of my previous scale videos, you'll probably know the melodic minor scale will be built on its own unique set of intervals, which is called its intervallic definition. In the case of the melodic minor scale, those intervals are tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Applying that to the guitar or a musical stave starting on an A to construct the A melodic minor scale, we would get A, a ton tone up to B, a semitone up to C, a tone up to D, a tone up to E, a tone up to F sharp, and we're calling it F sharp in this case as opposed to G flat, because the general rule when constructing a scale is to use the next successive note name. So in this case, the next note name after E is F, but the intervallic definition stipulates that the next note uh, is a tone up from E, so it has to be an F sharp. Another tone up from there is a G sharp, and finally a semitone will bring us back to A. Just to make sure that you've got that, let's look at another example. This time we can use C as the tonic to construct the C melodic minor scale. So starting on C, a tone up is D, a semitone up is E flat, a tone up is F, a tone up to G, another tone is A, another tone is B, and finally, semitone will bring us back to the C. Probably the best way to check that you understand this is to give it a go yourself. Pick a starting note that we haven't used yet and use the intervallic definition along with that rule that each successive scale degree should receive a different note name to construct uh, the scale based on the root that you choose. Um, another way that we can look at this is since all the intervals and the degrees of any scale are analyzed against the major scale, you'll notice that the third degree of a melodic minor is flat, which gives the scale its minor tonality. If the subject of intervals isn't something that you fully understand yet, you might like to check out my previous lesson on intervals, which is season two, episode seven. And knowing this relationship, um, should make constructing the scale and playing it a lot easier since if you already know the major scale on the guitar All you have to do is flatten the third degree to create its parallel melodic minor as shown here and to show you this on the guitar Here is a way to play C major scale And if I simply flatten the third note E I would be playing the C melodic minor scale As with any scale, it's a good idea to learn and practice it all over the fingerboard, starting from different positions. Once you know all the different positions for the scale, play them using sequences to really get your fingers and your ear familiar with it. And now, in order to put the scale to use, uh, you could start by harmonizing the scale, which will create its diatonic chords. And then if you find any of those diatonic chords um, from the melodic minor scale within a piece of music, you can simply use the corresponding melodic minor scale or mode to play over that chord. Another way in which the melodic minor scale is used is to create tension over a dominant chord that will be resolved up a fourth. And just to let you know, a dominant chord used in that way in a piece of music is referred to as a functioning dominant. So take for instance the common 2-5-1 chord prog progression in C major, that's D minor, G7, and C. Up until now, before learning the melodic minor, you may have just been inclined to use the major scale over the, all of those chords, but that doesn't create much, if any, tension when moving from the five chord and resolving to the one. So to make things a little bit more interesting, one option is to use the major scale, or technically uh, the Dorian mode over the two chord, and, and then add some tension with the melodic minor scale that's based a half step above the five chord, and finally resolve everything back to the major scale over the one chord. So here's an example to demonstrate that use. The 
same basic idea can also be applied to uh, the minor 251. In the case of C minor, the chords would be D minor 7 flat 5, uh, G7, and in this case you can add the flat 9, followed by C minor. This time, instead of using the major scale, we'll be using the natural minor scale for the 2 and the 1 chords, and over the G7, we'll still be using the A flat melodic minor as we did in the previous example. And here's how that might sound. And the final example I wanted to show you is how the melodic minor could be used in a blues setting. The first chord in a blues is usually a dominant seventh that moves up a fourth to the next chord, so the melodic minor fits right in. It's being applied in pretty much the same way as the last two examples, only this time we'll be using the pentatonic or the blues scale to resolve onto. Here's an example of that. So that's it for this video, if you found it helpful make sure to hit that like button. If you're confused at all about anything I explained, please ask questions as well as any suggestions, comments or requests down in the comments section. And if this is one of the first of my videos that you've watched, welcome to my channel, I'm very happy to have you here. I use this space to post videos like this covering different aspects of music theory, guitar playing, as well as covers, performances and gear demo reviews. I do all this basically because I'm really passionate about music and I know that you guys are too. And I just want to share these kind of tools, the things that I know and the things that I've learnt that can hopefully inspire you or help you with your personal musical endeavours. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, make sure to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date.